our guest is Michael Catt. Keep your weapon at your side. Your We've got to call men back to be the leaders in their home. When wrong seems right, convictions must be strong. Pierce the darkness with the light as you go along. Living with one foot in heaven, breaking the enemy's power. In the strength of Jesus, we can stand in the darkest hour. Living with one foot in heaven, ready when he falls our name. For believers to live this Christ to die is only gain. Welcome to Heritage of Truth. Today our guest is Michael Catt. He is the senior pastor at Sherwood Baptist Church in Albany, Georgia. And his uh, church has produced four movies now, is that correct? Right. Flywheel, Facing the Giants, um, Fireproof, and Now Courageous, which will be out in theaters on, on September 30th. Um, you are the executive producer of... One of them. Of one, one of them. One of which one? Is that Courageous? Uh, of all of them. I'm one of the executive producers. Oh, one Jimmy of Bride is, is one okay. as well. Okay. So, um, why do you think this movie is so important for our culture today? Well, I, I think we see all the statistics on absentee dads and dysfunctional families and uh, dads that are not engaged at home. You know, most dads come home, they're tired, they don't spend time with their kids, they're not investing, they're not paying attention to what they're saying, uh, who's influencing them. And I think we've got to call men back to be the leaders in their home. And that's what Courageous is about? Yes. Uh, four sheriff's officers initially, and then there's a fifth dad that comes into it. And they're all in various stages of fatherhood. Uh, and how they begin to grapple with, I'm not, I don't want to be a good enough dad. I want to be a great dad. Uh, and the pressures on their life, the pressures on their family, the issues that they deal with, we're trying to cover as many bases as we can with this ensemble cast to weave a story together where most men will find themselves in one of those characters. I've seen the movie and it is wonderful. I hope everybody goes out to see it on September 30th. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> well, what impact do you hope Courageous will have? Well, I think that, you know, the key for us is we've never made movies to, to try to make money. Uh, we, we make movies to see the lives changed. And if we can turn the tide, if uh, somebody is on the wrong path and they say, you know, I'm going to resolve in my heart that I'm going to make a difference as a dad. And even if they fail up to this point that they make the decision, I'm going to change. I'm going to do something different as a result of this. Uh, I think that will be success for us. You know, the stories that we've got from Facing the Giants and from fireproof of marriages that have been saved. And that's the most uh, reward I think you can have is when you get emails, letters, you hear stories from people that you meet that say, you know, that made a difference in my life. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we, we interviewed Mark Manier. He is a, a former policeman who uh, left for 20, 25 years, and he is now a mystery suspense novelist. And he had told us exactly what um, we've heard from the courageous people about the breakdown of society. He said that he saw it every day on the streets, the um, results of fathers not being there for their children. Right. And um, so would you talk a little bit about why you think fatherhood in America is in crisis? Well, uh, we live in a town that is a uh, declining population. It's 70% African-American. It's over 50% single parent homes or single adults. And so that means that there's an absence of a parent in a lot of homes in our community. And uh, we see the results of it in our work in the inner city uh, where many of these children are being raised by their grandparents. Even their parents are not there. Uh, they've been abandoned. Uh, I don't want you. I don't need you. You're a hindrance to my life. Uh, we've seen it in ministry in the jails. Uh, guys that are there because they never had a dad to show them, you know, and this crosses all lines. I mean, it doesn't matter. It can be in, in a white collar jail. It can be in a blue collar jail. Uh, it can be big money crime. It can be petty theft. But you start talking to these people and 
there was nobody that really invested in it. They didn't have a dad, they didn't have a mentor, and so they just took the wrong path. And uh, I think this is a great need for us to address. We can complain about it, about the crime rate in America, about the, the decay of the home, but if we don't do something to address it, then, you know, shame on us. Yeah, exactly. Do you think this is across all of Western culture, or do you think this is just an American problem? I think it's across all of Western culture. I, I, I think when you lose absolutes and everything becomes relative, uh, when it's how I feel determines what I do rather than I live by principles, I think it begins to decay a culture. And we're now several generations removed. If you count a generation in Maryland, uh, we're several generations removed from the removal of prayer and, and, you know, Gideons can't hardly get Bibles in schools anymore. And you start taking out things that kind of held us together and, and gave us a common uh, sense of direction. And then it's everybody's doing what's right in their own eyes and there's no king in Israel. Yeah. And uh, when you get that, you get the problems that we're dealing with. Exactly. I agree. Um, now, churches and other organizations are lining up behind the movie Courageous. But it's not about selling a movie, as you said. Um, I see it more as promoting a movement um, for basically turning the heart of the fathers back to the children, back to their families. And um, am I perceiving that correctly? I think it could be. Uh, whether it's one man in a small church or a pastor who says we need to start a men's ministry or a Sunday school class where the men say, you know, we're, we're going to start studying our Bible too. It's not just our wife's going to bring her Bible. We're going to start studying it. And, and uh, accountability among men. Uh, we've got about 100 men that meet every Tuesday uh, in a master life group. And they break up around tables and hold each other accountable, memorize scripture. And, uh, you know, I don't think we can orchestrate a movement, but I think God's Spirit can oh, cause absolutely. a movement to take place. And I know that your movies, there's always a lot of prayer that goes yes. into them. I actually pray every day for the the, um, the cast and crew of Courageous while you were making the movie. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I just uh, the, I, I just know that you're a praying, praying church, and I believe that's a lot of the reason that you're seeing the results you are, because you're letting God be the one to lead, and you're just obeying. So I, I thank you on behalf of all of us who have enjoyed the movies and and been inspired by them for being a praying church and, well, and putting that And that's, that's the key. That is the key for us. Well, with each Sherwood movie, you have gotten better. I was blown away by Courageous. It, it was so good. Um, in your book, Courageous Living, which um, just came out, right? right. Um, you stated, we don't care what critics, critics think. We make movies to reach people for an audience of one. Our standard is not Hollywood, it's him. So I want to thank you for sticking to that standard. And is there anything else you would like to share with our audience about Courageous, about your book? Well, uh, you know, one of the things we've done is we've developed some resources because we're looking at the movie as an event, mm -hmm. but then it's the now what. What do I do? Uh, Alex and Stephen have written a book called The Resolution for Men. Uh, Priscilla Shire has written one called Resolution for Women. There will be a Bible study uh, material. Jimmy Bright, our executive pastor, and also one of the executive producers, has written Writer Passage, which is how to take your kids when they're teenagers and talk to them what, about what being a godly man or a godly woman is all about. And then courageous living kind of takes broader than dads. It's just how do you live life courageously? Uh, Abraham getting up and leaving where he was, getting out of his comfort zone. Nehemiah facing his critics. Everybody faces critics. How did Nehemiah face his critics? Uh, Joshua is for me and my house we will serve the Lord. You know, he didn't ask his teenagers to vote on it. He just said, this is what our home is going to be like. Uh, so when you look at some of the heroes of the Bible, we say, why were they heroes? One of the reasons is they were heroic. Uh, Moses' parents made a choice 
to risk their lives to save their son because they believe God had a plan for him. And in a day where life is cheap and abortions every day, thousands of abortions, uh, it says this family wasn't afraid of Pharaoh. And so what do they do? They raised a son that wasn't afraid of Pharaoh. That's right. That's good. Yeah, in your book, um, you, you take examples from the Bible like that and, and show how they live graciously. Right. The, but then, you know, it's not just about them. It's not just a Bible study. It, it also shows us how to apply very much to life. And, right. and um, I think it's a really good book. Well, so. thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, well, thank you very much for being our guest. I really appreciate your taking time out to spend with to do us. It. And, and thank you again so much for the new Every time I watch a Sherwood movie, I leave inspired. So, uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Well, we're delighted to do it. Thanks.